was shoe polish and it all wiped right off. <laughs> and um, so this, I think Piltdown was the, uh, I don't know who actually perpetrated the hoax, but, uh, you know, what Pres Professor Rush is doing is comparing the orthodox view of Judeo-Christianity to the Piltdown hoax and how, you know, all these academics regardless of the proof that we have out there, slap each other's backs on how great their research is. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're they're propagating the Piltdown hoax, you know, and yeah. it's, uh, I'd have to agree with them. I think it's one of the, you know, one of the biggest scandals out there. And uh, it just boggles my mind when I read these so-called uh, academic theology books on how they just speculate that Jesus must have said this, and, well, this may have happened, and, you know, and it's just all built on, on nothing. And it's like, you know, typically they don't even question if Jesus was a real person or not. Right. And it's like, first, you know, when we approach history, we have to establish, are we studying myth, are we studying legend, or are we studying history? You know, and most of these people just come straight at it with the blind assumption that it's all historical fact, unquestionable, you know, it's like the, the mass exodus from Egypt. There's no evidence for it in an Egyptian text, and we're talking about an exodus so large it probably would have been about one-third of the uh, Egyptian population. Mm, and yeah. the Egyptians just have no mention of it whatsoever. You know, it's just gone. How is that possible? And, uh, you know, for the, for the Jews to be wandering in the desert for 40 years, we're talking a desert that's a few miles across that you and I could probably walk through by ourselves in a night or two. <laughs> You know, with a couple of canteens and some leather straps on our feet. <laughs> and so, you know, when you start thinking of, like, these people being lost in this little tiny desert between Jerusalem and Egypt for 40 years, when it's like only a, you know, it's like what, they couldn't follow the stars, they couldn't follow the, the, the moon or the, the sun or, you know, right. or they were just uh, exceptionally uh, stupid, um, you know, so we have to start thinking about these things. Are these real historical events, and is it even logical to consider them as such? And, of course, you know, when you think of a group of people wandering in a little desert that's a few miles across for 40 years, it's pretty absurd. Um, speaking of which, there is a very good book out that I highly recommend to your listeners. It came out, uh, I believe, in January of this year. It's called The Rod of Jesse by Ernest Werner. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Ernest Werner, I've... He is a uh, former Christian minister, former member of the Cornell University, University chaplain staff, former uh, preacher, former this, former that, and he was involved heavily in the in the church for 50 years when he resigned uh, in the process of writing the Rod of Jesse. And what the Rod of Jesse is is it's his his lifetime work at looking at all of the. Uh, proposals out there that say that Jesus never existed. And he goes out there and he rounds up at least all of the ones that were, you know, fairly current through the 1990s um, as far as there being no Jesus existing. Mm. And then he tries to refute all of these arguments. And um, by the end of the book, he finds that he cannot refute the evidence that he, and what he does is he breaks down each of the story into myth, legend, history. Oh. You know, what evidence is there for this? And, uh, you know, there's this is absurd. Of course, it's myth. This could have happened. It's probably, you know, may have happened to somebody. It might be a legend from a war or something. So he categorizes them all. And then by the end of the book, uh, what he discovers is that John Allegro, of all people, was his uh, biggest challenge. <laughs> and he dismisses Allegro's mushroom theory, which I challenged him on to refute my new work. And uh, he was actually the one I was debating him when I dis when I remembered that I had the Epistle to the Renegade Bishops document sitting on my computer for seven months that I had forgotten about. So I'm like, but we have this document. And then I'm like, oh, wait, we have this document. <laughs> and so it all just kind of exploded from that moment in the in this debate with this guy, Ernest Werner. So, right. Um, Bert. It's he bas basically what he dis what he argues is that Allegro may very well be correct about uh, the phallic worship in Judeo Christianity. He said that he couldn't refute, um, and then he says, but it, you know, and like I said in the book, he does dismiss the mushroom, but he focuses on on most of the research that's 
you know, older, like Allegro's original research, he's not aware that there's been another 200 books printed in the field since then. Ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> John, so in, in that regard, he misses the... Go ahead. Oh, no, I just wanted to ask you if you're familiar with the uh, the Jesus Seminar, this uh, group of uh, 150 or so scholars and uh, you know that, that meet regularly and, and uh, discuss some of these uh, issues that, that you're talking about now. Uh, yes, I am aware of them. In fact, I believe they meet here in California. Um, but uh, no, I've never gone and met with them. But I think they've found that 80 or 85 percent of all of the words that are said to be a Jesus words are are not uh, they're not able to su substantiate those claims. So yeah, you know, and these are leading academics, and what they do is they give them a different color bead or whatever on how they vote, and you know, is it historical? Maybe you know, possibly no way it's historical, and they've pretty much shown that. 85% of the so-called words of Jesus are in no way historically possible. Hmm. So, you know, if 85% of it is made up, then that leaves the other 15% very questionable. Right, right. So, um, do you get a lot of it? Uh, obviously, I mean, at, the, at, at that point, people will, who come from the Christian background, will see this as, as, as an attack upon their, uh, upon their faith, obviously. And, I mean... Uh, I guess on one level, is, is that a purpose, you know, to, to break down people's faith in that regard, or is this more about just finding out what the heck has happened if we go back into history and, well, and just get to the bottom of this, you know? Well, it's about getting to the truth, and it's about getting rid of faith, too. I mean, what is faith? It's a blind belief. Mm. Belief and faith, that's what religion is based on. You know, and like I mentioned earlier, these are political systems. They were designed to control and manipulate people yes. and get you know, they're, they are fear control mechanisms. They manipulate fear to get people to do absurd, crazy things like kill and go to war, you know, and um, and suppress one another in, in drug wars and everything else because their religion and some ancient book says that they're right because some jealous ancient uh, phallic god said so. <laughs> and uh, so... And it's all approved you know, by King James. Right, so the real, you know, the real purpose is to, you know, debunk religion. It is to show it as false. It is to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and going back to something that you asked me earlier, what's neat, though, is when you get to this deeper level of understanding and you're asking me, you know, do people become Christian? You know, does it push people away from Christianity? What is the feeling of that? Mm. When you get to this level of research and you begin to understand the deeper levels of it and how shamanism and witchcraft and the pagan tree worship and Asherah and Baal Peor and all of these different things, all of this was incorporated into Judeo-Christianity. And then when you can start to see and understand it, you can really appreciate the religion a lot more for what it really is yes. instead of this lie that we're that we're told to believe and have faith in without question. Right. And that you know, and the only reason why people who have faith are going to be upset is because all they base their opinion on is this blind, this blind faith. They don't read other books. They don't read the academic work. Most of them don't even read the Bible itself. They just go to church and that's their, you know, whatever the their priest or minister tells them. That's what they believe and. And you're not to question anything, and that's the end of the discussion. So, okay, so let's kind of wrap things up here a little bit then, John. Uh, the, the new book is out now. It's called The Holy Mushroom Again. And, uh, uh, I mean, is there anything you would like to, to uh, leave our, our listeners uh, with, as it were, here in the final uh, few minutes we have left? Well, um, it's something that I've said many, many times. It's before you attack a work, at least read the work and have – an understanding of what you're attacking before you attack it. Um, you know, all of these scholars and academics did not read Allegro. Even Wasson himself, we have since found out, never read Allegro. And all of these people attacked something that they never even read. They didn't want to look. They didn't want to see what was true. So they they put on these blindfolds, and then they just start shouting what they think is true, whether or not it is. And... You know, I really want to encourage people to read and to study and to go to the libraries and go look into the academic journals and research these things 
from yourself. You know, just because a bunch of people on the internet say something has been debunked doesn't mean it has been. No, no, absolutely you know, if, not. If a bunch of people, you know, if a bunch of people are claiming that Gerald Macy has been debunked, and all of these people are going back to Gerald Macy, well, go and read Gerald Macy yourself, and then open up and look at his citations and see where he was going from there. Yeah. And I think if, you know, if people actually follow through and read and research and verify and look in the academic journals and spend the time to do these things, they'll they'll not only have a much deeper appreciation for the stories and what they really mean, but I think the world in general would be a lot nicer place to live because, you know, we wouldn't be attacking things for the simple reason that we don't understand them or are too lazy to even attempt to. Yes, and, uh, you know, again, I think that Sightcast did a good thing when it comes to open up the topic, at least. And, and as you said uh, before, Jan, this is new information. And after, what, you know, 700 uh, years or so of Christianity, the, the, we can't expect that the, this should be embraced, you know, uh, overnight. This is going to take a little while to, to uh, uh, you know, process the new information and, and evaluate it on a, on a new level. So I think uh, this is great work that you're doing. And, and uh, good luck with the new book, John. Thank you. And let me just say that uh, I start off the uh, new book with a quote from Albert Einstein, if I uh, may end the show with the beginning of my book. Yes, please. It, the quote is, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. <laughs> I think I have that uh, quote on my website. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> That's a great one. Okay, thank, th <laughs> thank you very much, Jan, for coming on. Uh, again, mention your website address uh, one last time so people can uh, find more of your work. Yes, my website is GnosticMedia.com. That's G-N-O-S-T-I-C Media, M-E-D-I-A.com. And they can also uh, check out TheHolyMushroom.com for more information specifically just about the book. But uh, the Gnostic Media website has uh, more information on my other books and uh, articles I've written as well as my podcast. And uh, you can join my forum on there and all of that stuff too. Excellent. Thanks very much, Jan. Uh, keep up the good work. All right. Well, thank you for having me on, Henrik. I uh, appreciate it, and maybe we can do it again sometime. Absolutely. Thanks very much. See, I think drugs have done some good things for us. I really do. And if you don't believe drugs have done good things for us, do me a favor. Go home tonight, take all your albums, all your tapes, and all your CDs and burn them. Because you know what? The musicians who made all that great music that's enhanced your lives throughout the years... Real fucking high on drugs. <laughs>